The case of Vincent Valentine is a rather interesting one, as despite being an optional character in Final Fantasy VII who was actually quite easy to miss out entirely, he has still managed to become an extremely popular character in not just that specific cast, but also well beyond that. And as a case in point, he was often selected alongside other prominent Final Fantasy characters to take part in the Game FAQ's character battle, and he often only missed out on placing in the top 10, well ahead of other popular characters like Tifa, Lightning and Squall. And the funny thing is, that he almost didn't even exist as a character. As we previously ran through in our Vincent Valentine Facts video, there was a serious movement internally during the development of Final Fantasy VII to cut Vincent from the game due to time constraints as the project was getting into its crunch time. But after numerous discussions, the compromise of making him available as an optional character was reached, something which unfortunately then meant he'd end up with a diminished story as a result. Due to his popularity though, Square Enix decided to expand Vincent's story further in the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, and it meant that Hiroki Chiba, who was one of the key staff members responsible for a lot of Vincent's story in the original game, could get to work on creating the rich and meaningful character that he had probably always envisioned Vincent to be. Dirge Cerberus, where Vincent was promoted to acting as the main protagonist, was the cherry on the cake in this regard as it not only helped to flesh out Vincent's backstory, but it also served as the impetus for a brand new character arc. It also served to thrust Vincent further into the spotlight, and despite Dirge of Cerberus perhaps not being a critical darling due to its gameplay, the narrative was a very different kind of story. And it's why I wasn't too surprised that we've been getting a significant number of requests for us to cover Vincent Valentine in our Final Fantasy Origins video series because there's just so much that happens to him throughout his tale. There's love, loss, pain, suffering and redemption, and I cannot wait to get started. Before we do though, I just want to remind everyone that even if you are already subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit that notification button to make sure you get notified when we publish new content. Also, make sure you throw in the comments section who you'd like us to cover in the next Origins video. So, let's get started. Vincent Valentine was born as the son of Grimoire Valentine on the 13th of October 1950 in the Mew era, and on the surface at least, Vincent had a relatively normal childhood. Things would gradually change though, as his father would become more and more dedicated to his research within the Shinra Science Department, which was, amongst other things, focused around Chaos and Omega, two ancient entities born of the planet who would later on become intertwined with Vincent's fate. With Grimoire spending more time on his research, the relationship between Vincent and his father became somewhat strained, and just before he passed away, Grimoire expressed regret around this. With his final words, he asked his research assistant, Lucrezia Crescent, to tell Vincent that he was sorry. But Vincent did not ever receive this message, and perhaps due to wanting to understand more about what had happened to his father, to learn more about his dealings with the science department or just the wider company that he worked for, Vincent ended up joining Shinra's Department of Administrative Research, otherwise known as the Turks, when he was in his 20s. After undertaking numerous jobs where he was partnered up with Turks like Veld, Vincent ended up being assigned as a security detail for Professor Garst, Professor Hojo and Lucrezia Crescent, as well as other scientists at Shinra who were working on the Genova project. Vincent was completely unaware that they were all familiar with his father and his work, and none of them chose to disclose this information to him. However, upon meeting Vincent for the first time, Lucrezia was visibly shook. She tried her best to hide it, but the truth was that she still bore terrible guilt about the death of Vincent's father. She felt that it was her lack of patience during experimentation on chaos that was the primary reason that Grimoire had died, and meeting his son therefore brought back horrible memories of his demise. Despite this pain and his presence serving as a constant reminder of Grimoire, Lucrezia did though manage to compose herself, and due to Vincent's kind nature, the pair actually started to become quite close, even sharing picnics during their time away from the lab. Things changed though, when after reading a file that was left over on Lucrezia's computer, Vincent found out that she knew his father. He wanted to talk to her about it, as he wanted to learn more about his father, but at the time, the whole thing was just too emotional for Lucrezia, and she cruelly told Vincent that it was none of his business. 
As time passed, Lucrezia was able to open up to Vincent about what had happened, but at that point it was too late. Talking about it did not heal her wounds, it just made them cut deeper, and despite Vincent telling Lucrezia that he didn't hold her responsible for what had happened to his father, the magic that existed between the two was lost. With Vincent noting that from that day forward, the light had left Lucrezia's heart. Realising that she could no longer be with Vincent, Lucrezia instead chose to be with Professor Hojo. It was something that was very difficult for Vincent to take, but there was little he could do about it. He had already attempted to console and make her feel more comfortable with what had happened in the past, but she just wasn't ready to look past that and instead wanted to focus on herself and her work, albeit with a newfound self-destructive streak. This saw her agree to an extreme experiment, as having become pregnant with Hojo's child, the pair decided to submit their unborn fetus to the Genova Project for an experiment called Project S or Project Sephiroth. When Vincent found out, he was horrified. He had come into the Genova Project having no idea that such vile experiments were being undertaken, but even after understanding more during his time with the scientist, he had chosen to turn a blind eye. This new experiment though, it crossed the line for him due to the proposed use of Lucrezia as a human test subject, and he ended up voicing his concerns to Hojo. He likely knew that Hojo would not be swayed from his course, but he did not expect Lucrezia to respond in such a cold-hearted manner to his concern for her. He was hoping to at least change Lucrezia's mind to make her see how mad this all was, but after realising that she was no longer interested in his feelings for her, Vincent decided not to stand in Lucrezia's way any longer. He just sat back and watched as the experiment tore her apart, and his decision to not intervene at this stage would plague him for years to come. It was the sin that he carried with him, as he should have been able to put a stop to the experiment before it even began. Some years later, following the successful completion of Project S, Lucrezia continued to suffer from the experiment in both a mental and physical capacity, not least because she was never even allowed to see her child Sephiroth. At this point, Vincent decided that he could sit in silence no more, and he chose to confront Hojo in his lab. But Hojo? He was done playing games. He surprised Vincent, shooting him in the chest for his troubles, and then proceeded to experiment on his half-dead body as punishment for his insolence, but also because he was just genuinely curious to see what suffering he could put Vincent through in the name of science. Hojo proceeded to subject Vincent to heinous experiments, as he wanted to see how much the human body could endure. He also tested out metamorphosis to see if human bodies could cope with transforming into other forms like the Galleon Beast and the Death Gigas. These experiments did manage to strengthen Vincent's body, but Hojo started to lose patience. Due to that initial gunshot wound, Vincent was in a perpetual state of debilitation, and it meant that while there was some success, many of Hojo's plans didn't lend themselves to positive results. Hojo therefore decided to cast Vincent aside as a failure, but Lucrezia took it upon herself to try and save Vincent. As time had passed, she had become aware of just how asinine her previous actions were, and now, seeing more clearly, she realised that her true feelings were for Vincent, as Hojo had just used her to further his own career. What she felt was guilt, and she wanted to try and make amends. Lucrezia initially tried more conventional means, but success was limited, and she became more desperate. From her previous research, she knew of the power of chaos, and based on this, she concluded that by using chaos, there might be a chance to save Vincent, but there was also an ulterior motive. As an added benefit, she could also try to prove her thesis. It would see the Mako that Lucrezia had previously recovered with Grimoire from the Crystal Cave infused directly into Vincent's body, and the results were quite unexpected. Due to Hojo's previous experiments, Vincent's body was able to successfully withstand the torment that Chaos now placed on it, but there was no way to control it. Becoming even more desperate in her attempts to save Vincent, Lucrezia then remembered about the Proto-Materia. During their excavation, Grimoire had found it in the Crystal Cave and had hypothesised that the planet had created it as a means to control Chaos, but the opportunity to test a theory had never presented itself until now. Realising that this might be her last chance, Lucrezia therefore placed the proto-material inside Vincent's chest and found the theory to be true, as Vincent was at least able to subconsciously control the chaos inside him. 
Over time, along with the side effects from Hojo's experiments, the proto-materia would essentially lead to Vincent being morphed into an immortal, superhuman being. But in a rather cruel twist of fate, when Vincent regained full consciousness, nobody was around. The mansion was empty. Lucrezia had left, seeking isolation from the world that she no longer wanted to be part of, and Hojo had moved on to greater and grander experiments. Vincent therefore chose to see his new body as punishment for allowing Project S to happen, and he held himself responsible for what had happened to Lucrezia too, as she had previously done with Grimoire. As penance for his sins, Vincent then proceeded to lock himself in a coffin inside the basement of the Shinra mansion to sleep in solitude for all eternity. And this is where he stayed, undisturbed, for over 20 years until he became embroiled in a conflict between the Turks and the original incarnation of Avalanche that was led at the time by Fajito. Veld, the former leader of the Turks, entered the Shinra mansion in search of support material, hoping that he could remove the life-sapping material that was within his daughter's body. Thinking the material might be inside one of the coffins in the basement, they stumbled upon Vincent and the pair instantly recognised each other having been partners in the past before Vincent joined the Genova project. As so much time had passed, Veld was extremely curious as to how and why Vincent had not aged, and he surmised that it must have been Hojo's doing, but Vincent refused to entertain any conversations about this topic, and after giving them the information they required, he went back into his slumber but only a year would pass until he was disturbed once again, this time by Cloudstrife and his allies. Vincent was again dismissive of this interruption, instantly asking them to leave, but when Cloud mentioned Sephiroth, he was keen to learn more. He dangled the character revealing how he knew Sephiroth in exchange for the same information from Cloud, but after learning of Sephiroth's evil deeds, it only served as a further reminder that he should have put a stop to Project S when he had the chance. He therefore decided that more time in isolation was required to repent for his sins, and he wanted to regress back into his slumber. But after having a short time to reflect, Vincent decided, as he had done previously, that the time for silence was over. He needed to act once again, and after stopping Cloud and learning that the group were going after Hojo, he decided to go with them, seeking some kind of vengeance for the atrocities that had been committed. Soon after, Vincent managed to find his way to the Crystal Cave, where Lucrezia and Grimoire had previously excavated materials relating to their research around Chaos and Omega. Vincent was shocked to find Lucrezia inside, albeit in crystal form, but as he attempted to get closer to her, she warned him to stay back. She revealed to him that following everything that had happened, she had tried to kill herself, but it was to no avail as the Genova cells within her had made it impossible. Seeing how much she had suffered and was continuing to suffer, when Lucrezia inquired as to whether Sephiroth was still alive, Vincent therefore chose to save her from the pain of knowing what he had become and lied, telling her that Sephiroth had died five years prior in Nibelheim. Vincent then proceeded with his quest to stop Hojo, and when they learned that he had surfaced in Midgar and was appearing to help Sephiroth, the group launched an assault. Hojo's time had arrived. When they confronted him at the controls of the Sister Ray, Hojo was typically self-absorbed, barely concerned with the lesser minds who were attempting to speak and reason with him. And something he said during his grandiose explanation struck a nerve with Vincent. The two had serious animosity as it was. After all, Vincent had long been opposed to Hojo's experiments, and he had also been shot by the guy. But when Hojo refused to even acknowledge Lucrezia, simply referring to her as the woman that he used to further his own cause, Vincent was incensed. And it was in this moment that he realised it shouldn't have been him repenting all those years, it should have been Hojo. Hojo though continued to be dismissive, as he was already planning his next move. Yes, he was trying to help Sephiroth, but only so he could set his next plan in motion, to become the most powerful force on the planet. Having learnt about Chaos and Omega from the research of Grimoire and Lucrezia, Hojo hoped to summon and become Omega Weapon, the ultimate weapon on Gaia that could absorb the lifestream. He had therefore injected himself with Genova cells, something he'd done to try and perfect his body in preparation for merging with Omega Weapon, but it failed to take, and he was preparing his backup plan when he was interrupted and subsequently defeated, left to slump over the Sister Ray controls. Later, as Cloud and his allies prepared for their final assault on Sephiroth at the Northern Crater, Vincent and Yuffie were tasked with heading back to Midgar to help citizens escape from the impending arrival of Meteor, and it was during this time that Vincent decided to check on the Sister Ray. 
He wanted to see what had become of Hojo, and unfortunately his suspicions were correct. Hojo was still alive. Making his way to the top of the tower, Vincent was determined to finish the job, but just as he was about to pull the trigger, lightning struck the sister ray. He recovered to find Hojo no longer there, as he had uploaded himself to the worldwide network, and realising that there was nothing more he could do, Vincent returned to helping evacuate people from Midgar, including Rufus Shinra. After the defeat of Sephiroth and successful evacuation of Midgar, Vincent chose to distance himself from his comrades. He no longer felt the need to place himself in complete isolation as he had done before, but instead of attempting to become closer with the heroes he'd saved the planet with, he instead chose to travel around Gaia alone, looking to help people who were in need. And it was during this time that Vincent would hear rumours relating to strange goings on in the Forgotten Capital. Upon investigating, he was able to rescue Seng and Elena, saving them from certain death following their torture sessions at the hands of the remnants of Sephiroth. Not too long after, Vincent was again called into action at the Forgotten Capital, this time rescuing Cloud after he was bested by the three remnants in combat. But with the conflict then beginning to centre around the City of Edge, Vincent left the Forgotten Capital and actively joined the fight against the remnants of Sephiroth. He played a vital role in helping his friends defeat Bahamut Sin, which had been summoned by Kadaj, but following the fight he withdrew to the Shearer, Sid's new airship. Here, he watched on as Cloud squared off against a reborn Sephiroth. Many of the others wanted to help, but Vincent dissuaded them, stating that Cloud was capable of winning this fight on his own, as he knew that this was a personal battle that he needed to get through himself. After the defeat of Sephiroth for a second time, Vincent's next challenge would hit much closer to home, but he wouldn't initially realise this. A year later, the worldwide network would be restored, and when Vias the Immaculate was performing a synaptic neck dive into it, Hojo took the opportunity to seize control of Vias, allowing him to act as the commander of Deep Ground, a secret military organisation that Shinra kept locked away underneath Mako Reactor Zero. Now in control of a considerable military force, Hojo commanded Deep Ground forces to launch a huge offensive on the world's population with two objectives. One, abduct those who weren't affected by Geostigma so that they could be sacrificed to create pure livestream, therefore tricking a mega weapon into awakening early. And two, find Vincent Valentine, as he knew the location of the proto materia which they would need to control a mega weapon once it awakened and merged with Vice's body. They started this offensive at the village of Calm, which is where Vincent just happened to be as he was attending a festival that was taking place to celebrate the restoration of the worldwide network. With so many forces in play, and with Vincent actively fighting back, it therefore didn't take deep ground forces too long to find him. This attracted the attention of the Sviets, an elite group of soldiers within deep ground forces, and it meant that Vincent was accosted by Shulk the Transparent and Azul the Cerulean. But before things could get too tasty, Shulk fainted and they were forced to withdraw. As the conflict waged throughout Calm, Vincent was approached by Reeve, his former ally who is now the leader of the World Regenesis organisation. He was keen to ask for assistance, but Vincent was initially resistant. As he had done previously, Vincent was instead keen to disappear back into the shadows and remove himself from the world's wider conflicts. Deep Ground's continued attacks though left him with little choice, and after he helped secure Calm, Vincent then ventured to Edge as there had been reports of fighting there too. When he arrived though, the city was deserted. Deciding to investigate, Vincent stumbled upon Shalua Rui, a WRO scientist who was looking for her sister, and after venturing further into the city, he came face to face with another member of the Sviet, Rosso the Crimson. Tasked with the same mission as Shulk and Azul, she pressed Vincent for the location of the Proto Materia, but after Vincent refused to divulge any information, Rosso turned aggressive and caught Vincent off guard with her raw power. It forced Vincent to transform into chaos in order to defend himself, which led Rosso to withdraw. But it also revealed to her that the Proto Materia was housed inside Vincent's body. With their target now fully acquired, the Sviets became much more aggressive with their attempts to acquire the Proto Materia. It led to them storming the WRO headquarters as they knew Vincent had been taken there to recover following the skirmish with Rosso. The assault this time was led by Shulk and Azul, but despite doing considerable damage to the complex, Vincent was able to sedate Shulk and subdue Azul. After the conflict, Vincent was left with many unanswered questions about his past. 
He was obviously aware that experiments had been performed on him after his fateful encounter with Hojo decades prior, but he knew very little about his powers and how he could control them. He therefore decided to venture back to the Shinra mansion in search of answers, as he hoped to learn more about Omega and Chaos by sifting through the research that was conducted by Lucrezia and his father. Whilst there, he managed to find a hologram of Lucrezia that she had left behind, but his search for knowledge was interrupted by Rosso and she played Vincent for a fool. Distracting him with a meaningless fight, Rosso was able to rip the proto-materia from Vincent's body by catching him unawares, and with the mechanism that Lucrezia had given him now gone, Vincent was unable to control the chaos within him, leaving him defenseless lying on the floor. Fortunately, he was rescued by Yuffie, and after being able to recuperate, the chaos within him was contained, for now. But there was little time for him to reflect on what had happened, as the threat from Deep Ground was only just beginning to manifest. Azul awakened within the WRO headquarters, and it was attacked once again. Vincent returned to provide aid, but the WRO suffered severe losses, including Shalua, who before sacrificing herself so that Shelt could live, made Vincent promise to look after her. Shalua's sacrifice affected everyone significantly, and Reeve considered giving up as he didn't believe they could even compete against Deep Ground. But Vincent, as he had done with Cloud the previous year, knew exactly what was needed to help Reeve get through this emotional hardship. He reminded him that three years prior, he was taught that it was best to move ahead, and this simple statement, especially as it came from Vincent, inspired Reeve and he started to draft up plans for an assault on Midgar. It also showed that Vincent had become committed to seeing this conflict through to the end, although he wasn't exactly sure why. Part of him had hoped that it would help to put an end to the madness surrounding his life, but he was still quite lost inside himself. With Reeve now re-energised, the WRO hoped to deactivate the various macro reactors before storming macro reactor zero in order to stop deep ground forces from killing any more people, thus preventing the summoning of a mega weapon. Vincent was crucial to these plans, as he would be made responsible for defeating the four remaining members of the Sviets, Azul, Rosso, Nero and Vice. But on the eve of the battle, Vincent started to lose control of the chaos inside him. It was an uncomfortable sensation that he wasn't used to feeling, but after seeing a vision of Lucrezia, he was able to bring it back under control. Despite gaining assistance from his former comrades like Cloud, Barrett and Tifa, Deep Ground were prepared for the assault, and their defensive efforts forced Vincent to miss his intended landing zone. Nonetheless, he was able to proceed on foot to his designated location, and he was able to defeat Rosa the Crimson at the third time of asking, without needing to rely on the power of chaos. Soon after though, Chaos did rear its ugly head, but Vincent was able to control it temporarily, at least until his fight against Azul turned sideways. Vincent was able to defeat Azul to a point, but after the tide turned, Chaos appeared, destroying Azul at the very core. It wiped Vincent out, but after recovering, he continued onto deep ground itself, but inside he was sucked into the darkness by Nero. He was hoping to consume Vincent, as he had done to many other countless victims, but he failed to understand the source of his own powers and his strange relationship with Vincent. Nero was the only successful candidate from an experiment that was based on Grimoire's Omega reports, and it led to him being subjected to Chaos-infused Mako while still a fetus in his mother's womb. With Chaos residing as a prominent part of Vincent, he was therefore immune to Nero's powers, and after realising this, Nero chose to retreat, confused. When they next met, Nero attempted to manipulate the darkness to help him defeat Vincent, but once again he was unable to succeed and retreated again to his brother's side. Vincent then entered into Vice's throne room to see a now omega infused Vice sucker punch Nero, as he had absolutely no clue that it was actually Hojo, not Vice, that he had been supporting throughout this conflict. Hojo then revealed himself to Vincent, as well as his plans, and proceeded to brutalise Vincent to test out his new, all-powerful body. Vincent then transformed into Feral Chaos, but his attempts to attack Hojo were futile due to the power of Omega that now resided within Vice. However, after receiving words of encouragement from Lucrezia via Shulk as a proxy, Vincent was able to use his mind to draw upon the Proto-Materia and control Chaos while maintaining his human form. It put them on a level playing field, and Vincent was able to best Hojo. In his weakened state, Nero, who had now somewhat recovered, then took the chance to merge with Vice, creating an impure host that not only rejected Omega's power, but killed Hojo once and for all. 
The unfortunate side effect was that it removed the conduit, and a mega weapon was now born in its full form. This also activated true chaos, and Vincent lost control of himself, becoming the pawn that would be tasked with sending all remaining life into the livestream for a mega to collect. Shulk, realizing what was happening, used her abilities to perform a synaptic net dive into a mega weapon, allowing her to connect with Lucrezia and retrieve the proto materia for Vincent. Using fragments from within the network that Shulk had found, Vincent was then able to get a degree of closure around everything that had happened with Lucrezia. He connected with her, as in the fragments she left behind, Lucrezia apologised for all of the suffering that she had caused him throughout the years, from the death of his father, to manipulating and hurting him emotionally, and then using him to complete her thesis. And lastly, above all, she conveyed that she was just happy that he was able to survive. These words inspired Vincent, and he resolved to defeat a mega weapon and save the planet. And he was aided in this mission with the help of his friends, who were able to destroy the various macro reactors around Midgar. With a mega weapon then looking to escape and ascend into space, Vincent chose to sacrifice himself to force it to stop. But he was able to survive, albeit at the loss of his chaos powers. His friends were desperate to learn if he had survived following the conflict, and Cloud went out searching for any sign of Vincent. But Vincent had somewhat regressed to his former self, and chose to keep his status a secret, at least until he had visited the Crystal Cave in order to thank Lucrezia for saving his life, and ultimately, allowing him to save the world. And that neat little conclusion brings us to the end of Vincent Valentine's story. No doubt when the Final Fantasy VII Remake releases, things will be fleshed out quite considerably, but I just really hope they flesh out his rivalry with Hojo. I think it's very easy to feel sympathetic towards Vincent as a character. His time on the Genova project caused severe damage to him mentally, and both Lucrezia and Hojo were very much responsible for this. But after his self-imposed exile, he was able to somewhat integrate back into society, ultimately fulfilling an extremely useful role in the fight for humanity's survival. And I think it's this frailty that makes Vincent such an endearing and popular character. Sure, the way he behaves does give him an allure of mystery, but once you dig deeper and understand more about his past, it's difficult not to see him for what he truly is, an outsider who just wants to belong but doesn't really know how anymore. It's why the ending was quite satisfying for me, as it showed that even without an impending crisis on the horizon, Vincent was finally opening up to becoming a more active part of the group that he'd shared so much with. Either way, that marks the end of this Origins video. If you made it this far, make sure you give yourself that customary pat on the back in the comments. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, share this video around to all the people you know who love Vincent and Final Fantasy VII, and why not subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Also, be sure to let me know what you thought, and feel free to let us know what Vincent means to you as a character. Why not also consider supporting us on Patreon? You get the satisfaction of knowing that you help and support the channel in the creation of these kind of videos, and we will reward you with, amongst other things, putting your name at the end of videos like these guys are. I'd also like to apologise for the delay in putting this video out. We always want to make sure that we're really proud of the content we produce, and Vincent required a little bit more time due to all the skipping around with his story throughout the various compilation games. We'll try to make sure the next one comes out a bit sooner so you don't have to wait as long, and as a way of apology, I'll throw out a hint as to who the next character might be, because they may well have a tale. Alright guys, thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive into the lore of Final Fantasy VII. This is Daryl, signing out, and I'll see you next time for more Final Fantasy videos.